All right, listen, let's not do the whole dance of I say this is a mid direct and then chat gaslights me into this is the best direct we've ever had and every single announcement was tailored perfectly for me and then everyone likes and comments on that reply with, yeah, I can't believe Paper Mario does on your door. So this, this is for my YouTube video I make today. I did a poll, 10,000 people approximately and 50% said mid and then 31% said bad. We're in the tail end of the Switch's lifespan at this point. The best directs for the Switch are behind us. Especially when we had Smash and we were getting Smash reveals, which always heightened a direct. At this point, a Nintendo Direct is just a press public event that lets us know what's happening in the coming weeks or months on the Switch. It's not going to get too crazy until we start looking at the Nintendo Switch 2. So was this a mid-direct? According to the 10,000 people that watched it with me, yeah, it kind of was. But there was a lot of really great things in this Direct. And I got to say, as far as recent Directs, this went by really quickly. I enjoyed almost everything that I saw. Maybe it was a little eh, but I think it was a good eh. Kind of like stuff. <laughs> now, there was a lot of really great things in here we can take a look at. I had a great time watching it. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to skim through a lot and then go into a deeper detail today on my podcast, which you can watch wherever you watch my podcast. But it started with Splatoon 3 DLC. I'm not big in a Splatoon and I fell off the third one pretty quickly, but I love the art style, the music and the direction of this DLC. And it sounds like it's a giant tower that you battle your way up and improve your stats on the way, but they said it's infinitely replayable, and I kind of like that. It's like adding a roguelike into a non-roguelike game, but it adds that infinite replayability, which is great for DLC. Mario vs. Donkey Kong Remake. I have never played one of these. You could, I, I, I swear to God, before today, if you had asked me what kind of game these even were, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell you. I've just never been interested. It looks very charming. I am just assuming by looking at this gameplay that it's for a younger audience. Just kind of like a, a more kid-friendly Mario game. Although I guess all Mario games are kid-friendly, but this one looks very catered towards children. It looks cute and fun. Obviously, no reason for me to play it, but... The Switch is for all ages. <laughs> this new Prince of Persia game looks too good. I, I don't know. I'm It doesn't feel right to be excited for a Ubisoft game. I, it, it, I feel dirty saying that. <laughs> Which is a shame because I used to love Ubisoft games. But this one looks great. It looks like it's taken a lot of inspiration from Metroid Dread. But it's Prince of Persia. I'm looking forward to this game. Yeah, we'll just skip through a little bit. Because it, it did get off the rails a bit. There's a Spy uh, Family game. I've never seen Spy Family. This is revolving around the daughter, I guess. It looks cute. I don't know. Might, maybe fun. And then, of course, we start getting the glimpses, the, 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 the deeper dives into things that we'd already heard about, but we're seeing more of them now, like Mario RPG, which... They've added a lot to this game, actually. Uh, now, if you time a attack command perfectly, you can hit all enemies, which will hope for, will definitely speed up a lot of the fights, but hopefully not make it too easy to just start wailing on every enemy at once every time you attack. That might cheapen it a little bit for me, but we'll see. I could also just not time my attack make it harder for myself. Apparently, there are these old DS games. One was never even released in, outside of Japan, and they're getting a remake and, or a remaster and a port over to the Switch. I don't know if these are cult classics. For some people, they look interesting. Uh, I don't know if I'll play them, but this one did catch my eye, but I don't think I'll play it, so I guess it didn't catch it that hard. Oh, now the Peach game, the Princess Peach Showtime, which I don't love that name, but it's fine. I didn't make it. You know what I do love? This. I, this actually slaps. I wasn't sure if I'd be excited for this game. I'm still not sure what I make of it as a whole. I can't tell how the game plays exactly. And every time Peach gets a new outfit, 
the gameplay style is supposed to drastically change. And since it's set around Showtime and like a play or like a movie theater, it almost says to me just set pieces where in each little set piece of a level, you do a different thing, almost mini game adjacent where now you're doing this and now you're doing this. But it does seem to have some side scrolling elements to it too, almost Paper Mario-y in the way that it looks. I, I really have no idea how this one is going to play out. You know, a lot of streamers like to make bingo cards before going into a direct, but I guarantee you Tomb Raiders 1 through 3 remastered were not on anybody's bingo card. Also, kind of remastered? It's interesting. <laughs> They knocked out a lot of the triangles in the character model. I mean, she definitely looks remastered, but also Lara herself has really only been remastered to about PlayStation 2. And then the rest of the game, I mean, it's brighter. Some parts look a lot better. Some parts, if you'd have just told me it was the original, I would have assumed that it was. Like, I can see the difference when you put them next to each other, but the way that my brain remembers these games are a lot closer to the new remastered version. So if I had just seen that, I would have been like, yeah, that's... Oh, that's the first Tomb Raider. So yeah, I don't know. It's... It's a... It is technically remastered. All of that shade thrown... I am actually excited to dive into these games again. I have a lot of nostalgia for them. This is, this only matters to me and I, none of you are gonna care, but I, I'm work, I've, I've made a really fun YouTube video where I played all 11 of the IR Reader Switch games and there's only 11 and there hasn't been a new one in years. <laughs> Literally the entire library of, of Switch has 11 games that use the IR Reader. This direct, introduced two new ones. My video is done. It's ready to go. And now I got to add in two more. We have this trombone game, which was previously available on other consoles. It's coming to Switch and they've added motion controls and IR controls because they hate me. And also the new WarriorWare game. We got a deeper look at that and it uses some IR motion control. There are, there are 11 IR games on the Switch total in the last five, almost six mode. years. And they just added two more in this direct? Are you kidding me? Anyway. Sorry, that's a very me problem that this direct caused. Another look at Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, which is literally just Luigi's Mansion 2 from the 3DS on the Switch. Uh, I can't, I don't, I don't think they did it. And, mm -hmm. Oh, and they showed us the Nintendo Museum that's coming to Kyoto, which is in March, which is a shame because I'm going to Japan this month. I don't know if I told you guys that yet, but you got more Japan vlogs coming. It would be really cool if the museum was ready because I'm actually going to Kyoto. I'm going with Bob and uh, Kim, obviously, and, and it's going to be so much fun. Let us in the museum early, Miyamoto. Let us in. Oh, and this is cool. So they told us when the Zelda and Ganondorf amiibos for Tears of the Kingdom are coming. On top of that, they've added Xenoblade 3 amiibos and they look great, Noah and Mio. I think this might be the first time in a long time we've had amiibos outside of Smash, which is a shame looking at these almost because it's like you almost kind of wish they were playable in Smash. It feels like a Smash reveal, but like it's not. You could keep doing characters for Smash. It's not too late to just do a couple more. And then on top of that, speaking of Smash characters, the final Smash character that didn't have an amiibo yet was Sora, and now he does. This amiibo looks fantastic. Up until now, honestly, Tomb Raider might have been the thing I was most excited about. <laughs> but then, not only does Nintendo acknowledge F-Zero, they put F-Zero on the screen during a direct. So they remember F-Zero exists, but it's F Zero ninety nine. Whoa! 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 F Zero ninety nine. That's sick. <laughs> Just like they did with Mario ninety nine and Tetris ninety nine. Now you can race F Zero style with nine with ninety eight other players in a revamped version of the game where when the cars clash they drop orbs and if you pick up enough of them you can go to the Skyway and shoot over the top of them. I, a lot of us want a new F-Zero, and this it, it kind of is, but isn't what we were talking about. But to be honest, this is sick, and I'm actually very okay with this. 
especially if it's a stepping stone to new F-Zero. <laughs> Dave the Diver. I saw people playing this on Twitch. It hasn't come to consoles yet. It's coming to Switch soon. This game looks really fun. Like, honestly, people are calling this game of the year contender, which I think is not really, but just to go to show how fun it actually is. And I've been waiting to play it until it comes to Switch. So that was very exciting. Then more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe stuff. Mostly characters they showed, including Peachette. So now we just need Bowsette to come. And then honestly, I honestly I I'm kind of burned out on Mario Kart, and I don't really I don't really care anymore or play it anymore. If they added Bowsette, I would reinstall <laughs> Nintendo. I would reinstall. Right near the end, they thought it would be a good idea to give us a two-minute trailer for Among Us, and it just boiled down to a new map. So that was a fun use of our time. Then the final look at the last thing this Direct had to offer. What could it possibly be? Metroid Prime 4, you might be wondering? No, something possibly even better. I had, this is the first time during a live reaction that I was rendered completely speechless. When I saw this, I immediately thought it was a new Paper Mario, which is crazy because we've already had two for the Switch. I thought it was a sequel to Thousand Year Door. I thought, because I was like, this looks like a Thousand Year Door. That looks like the town from a Thousand Year Door. But there's no way, there's no way where, get, the, the, there's no way Nintendo's going back to when Paper Mario was good. This has to be a sequel with dumb new controls, like, origami and color splash and we're gonna hate it and we're gonna wish it was thousand year door no it is actually thousand year door it is a remake of thousand year door and i kept watching it speechless just hoping i wasn't wrong and this was what i thought it was thousand year door is my favorite paper mario if you've ever played a paper mario and you haven't played this one this is the best one for the story for the pacing but mostly for the, the RPG mechanics of it all, the battle mechanics, was just the best and most rewarding. It didn't have any dumb gimmicks. It just was a good RPG. And then there was like a weird look at the end of Peach and this, uh, this robot. And I don't remember this from the first game. And Peach is talking about teaching it love. And it almost seems like they're hinting towards maybe there's new story in this game. They've added stuff, or it's DLC, or it's or it's Paper Peach. I don't really know what we're looking at the end there, but very intriguing. As mid as everyone said it was, I had a lot to gush about here for this video. There was a lot of meat to look at and, and pick at. There were a lot of cool announcements. There was nothing, I think, that, there was nothing massive, right? There was no big thing. This was, it felt like a cookie cutter direct that kind of just told us about some things that were coming up. There was a couple cool third party things and then a remake for one of our favorite games. But I do agree, it, it kind of feels like something big was missing. I am, I am, I, it was good. It was fine. And there's a lot that I'm excited for. Let me know what you're most excited for down below. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and all of that. Oh, God, I'm so tired. There's so much to do today. See you guys soon for the podcast. <laughs> Bye.